Hi everyone, I'm Professor Learning. As part of this course, we will learn the following. 1. Marshalling signals and guiding the aircraft to its parking slot. 2. Pushback operations with tow bar and tow truck. 3. Pushback operations with tow bar less tow truck. During this, we will also learn the role of proper communication in preventing accidents and incidents. Well, Professor, the aircraft has just come in. So, should we start the class? Yes, Professor. As you can see, the aircraft has reached the exit ramp and is now ready to be brought to the parking bay and the person responsible for this is the marshaller. And now, the captain has seen the marshaller and starts steering the aircraft towards him. The captain seems to have drifted a little to the right. But there is no harm done as the marshaller safely signals him back to the correct position. The marshaller signals the captain to slow down as the aircraft reaches the gate. And there's a stop signal. But of course, his job is not done yet. He is waiting for the ground staff to put the chocks in and once that is done, he signals the captain. The captain acknowledges. And now, the marshaller asks the captain to put the aircraft brakes on and waits for the captain to acknowledge that it is done. Finally, the marshaller signals to the captain to cut engines and only after he receives the acknowledgement does he salute the captain, signaling that his job is done and leaves the apron. Well, Professor, that was an easy introduction to marshalling. But there is much more to it, isn't there? Yes, Professor. So why don't we ask the marshaller himself to demonstrate and take us through the various signals? That is an excellent idea, Professor. Hello, marshaller. Hi, Professors. How may I help you today? Well, Marshaller, don't we know that marshalling training is performed according to IATA AHM 6309.38, AHM 6319.2? Well, could you demonstrate each of the signals as we take you through them, please? There are different marshalling signals for aircraft marshalling and for ground support equipment. Let us first start with aircraft marshalling. Let us start with the basics. A marshaller uses two tools of the trade, his hands and his wands. In the night, the wands can be illuminated ones for proper visibility. The important things for any marshaller to remember are Check that the wands are in serviceable condition. Be present at the gate at least 15 minutes prior to aircraft arriving. Ensure that the equipment restraint area is clear of any obstructions. Now, let's take a look at the marshalling signals. When the aircraft is approaching the parking bay, the marshaller stands at the gate and holds his wands up to identify both the marshaller and the gate. The gate is the place where the aircraft comes to a stop and parks. Once the aircraft is on the yellow line in the center, the marshaller indicates that it should continue to taxi straight ahead by bending extended arms at elbows and moving them up and down from waist to head. The speed at which the marshaller's arms move during the signaling indicates the speed at which the aircraft should proceed. To get the aircraft to slow down, move extended arms downwards in a patting gesture. When the marshaller wants the aircraft to move to his left, he extends the left arm with the wand at 90 degrees to the body and gives the come ahead signal with his right hand. And when the marshaller wants the aircraft to turn right from his point of view, with wand extended at 90 degree angle, he makes a signal with his left hand to come ahead. For a normal stop, the marshaller extends his arms and wands fully at a 90 degree angle to his sides and slowly moves them above the head until the wands cross. If, however, the marshaller needs to bring the aircraft to an emergency stop for any reason, maybe he has seen some obstruction, then he abruptly brings his wands up and crosses them above his head. When the marshaller wants the aircraft to hold position for some reason, he extends his arms and wands downwards at 45 degrees 
to the sides and remains that way till the aircraft is clear for the next maneuver. Once the aircraft has come to the required position, the marshaller waits for the ground support staff to insert chocks and then signals to the captain that the chocks are in place by moving the wands inwards in a jabbing motion till the wands touch. And once the captain signals that brakes have been set, the marshaller signals the captain that he can cut engines by extending left arm upwards and with the right hand taking the wands to left shoulder and drawing it across his throat in a slicing motion. When the aircraft has moved out of the marshaller's area of operation and he needs to pass the aircraft to the next marshaller, he points both arms and wands up and outwards towards the direction of the next marshaller. When the aircraft comes to the desired position and chocks have been inserted, the marshaller signals to the pilot to set brakes. He holds a hand up just above shoulder height and closes it in a fist and does not move till the pilot acknowledges that brakes have been set. Similarly, while asking the captain to release brakes, the marshaller ensures eye contact with the captain and releases the closed fist. The signal by the marshaller to the captain to start engines is to raise his right arm with wand pointing up. In case the marshaller spots a fire somewhere on the aircraft, he continuously moves his right hand in a fanning motion from shoulder to knee while pointing the left wand to the area of the fire. When the marshaller needs to tell the pilot to connect the ground power unit, he will stand with both arms above his head with the right hand pointing straight upwards and the left palm placed at right angles to his right hand. He then moves his right palm upwards till his fingers touch the center of his left palm at a right angle. And when he wants to tell the pilot to disconnect the ground power unit, he stands in the exact same position but this time he will move his right palm downwards in a disconnecting motion from his left palm. When the aircraft is ready to move from the parking bay, the marshaller waits until he has been authorized by the captain that chocks may be removed. He confirms that ground support has removed the chocks from the aircraft wheels and then informs the captain by extending his arms and wands fully above his head, turning the wands outwards in a jabbing motion. Once all checks have been done and the aircraft is ready to taxi, the marshaller performs a standard military salute with his right hand or wand to send the aircraft on its way. Remember, we have to maintain eye contact with the flight crew till the aircraft has begun to taxi and only then leave our station. Besides this, we do have some standard communication signals which are the thumbs up which indicates an affirmative or an all clear and and the thumbs down which symbolizes negative. When the marshaller needs to tell the captain to open or close doors either fore or aft, he stands with right arm at side and left arm raised above head at a 45 degree angle, moving right arm in sweeping motion towards top of left shoulder. In case the marshaller wants to indicate to the captain that he must not touch controls, then he raises his right hand above head level and close fist or hold wand in horizontal position and his left arm remains at his side by the knee. When the marshaller needs to communicate to the captain that the interphones are on, he extends both arms at 90 degrees from the body and moves hands to cup both ears. Well, that completes the marshalling signals required to communicate between the flight crew and the marshaller. Let's take a break now and check our understanding of marshalling signals. In the next module, we will move on to push back operations and the communication required for the procedure. Thank you.